Hello, this is Xiao Kui. In this demo, I am a threat hunter, searching for attacks like these ones. Recently, I get a new client, StarX, who finds me to do a hunt in their enterprise network to discover advanced threats beyond what firewalls and IDS can detect. OK, let's start. So I usually use Jupyter Notebook to do hunting. And let's create our first orchestral hunt flow for star x. And we can um, give it um, a name. And before we start, um, we need to understand the target, star x. Their assets, their services, their monitors, so we know what to ask in a hunt. For this purpose, I get their topology so that we can take a look. Um, OK. And we can mark, put it into a markdown and display that. OK. So Star X has two private networks, one for their employees' laptops and workstations, one for their servers. All servers are Linux, and they have Sysflow running on all of the servers which are monitors that we can ask for real-time data, what's happening there. So the company has security in mind. So they have web proxy that uh, um, audit and logs all HTTP and HTTPS traffic before they hit the internet. And they put their sensitive data, commercial secrets, in a network storage and has limited access to it, uh, only give it access to specific servers and, and uh, users. OK. So um, where well to start? Um, we can start from one of the um, we can start from one of the um, servers, the first server thirty one, and we can start with my favorite TTP, the web service exploit. So as I explained earlier, um, in the slides, this web service exploit is something that um, we can match instance um, that shows this is a new process forked from a web service, but not actually the web service. So we can say um, we use a six shifter to access the data, um, Linux server uh, 31, and we need to use this pattern, um, parent ref, uh, to describe the, the TDP pattern. So that process binary ref dot name not equals to node. So this is basically um, what this pattern is, and we want to find this process is, if it exists. So to make the search um, faster, we do not want to hit the server of months of data. We want to restrict it, for example, for a day. Today is April 5th, and let's do April 5th. Usually, a day's data is about 10 gigabytes from Sysflow, and uh, oh, that's, that's pretty quick. OK, so we get back over 100 records. Do not worry. So records are not entities. Records are raw data that we get back. A cache will process that for you so that um, you can ask it for entity information. Um, so name, PID, command line. Um, actually, there's only one entity here. Even we get so many records back that this single entity has a single PID with two names. The reason for it is this is how Linux handle process creation. It has two system calls. Um, so this is the final one that uh, um, that will do a netcat, um, connect to a compromised server and uh, fork a bash. No, change to a bash. So let's see if we find something like this. Um, created by um, um, name PID and command line so that um, if we are lucky, and if a no, no, if attacker is lucky to get in and uh, establish it, establish it successfully, we will see that uh, a netcat process forked from it, and then that one will change itself to a bash um, according to this um, command. What does this mean? Okay, we get it. Yeah, really, we get two some record back, but actually the records are sort of with three um, entities, or just one entity actually, with one single PID. As we said, this is the parent, this is a forked, and this is the final process. Okay, so this is actually turned into a bash. When attacker comes in and connects through a bash, what will he do? So let's see, find process 
created by um, Mapcat and uh, let's display um, name, PID, and uh, command line as usual. Um, okay, so this will give you an idea um, about what activities that a hacker did um, after getting in and fork a bash into the system. Okay, the netcat and bash are actually the same one as you can see, the PID is the same. So, um, okay, okay, that's not too slow. <laughs> Uh, we get many, many uh, things that the attacker did, okay? Um, too many of them. So which one is more important than the other so that we can, uh, we can further drill down? We need to ask, get some intelligence. Um, if there is something that can sort it by the suspiciousness, that will be very useful, okay? Here we introduce our first um, uh, analytics that we can run analytics as Docker containers, as I previously said, uh, suspicious process scoring. So this is the one um, that uh, we can run, and uh, we can also show some of the suspicious things. Um, not only the command line, um, but also a new uh, attribute set generated by these. Um, analytics. So this analytics actually use sigma rules and some of the other kind of knowledge to understand uh, how suspicious a process is. Okay, I said we need to rank it. Okay, uh, and we can sort suspicious p by um, so that we um, replace the original variable with uh, the same name variable uh, with a sorted result and and show it. Okay. Then this is the most suspicious process that we can drill down f next. So looks like this is something related to Twitter, maybe some network traffic. So let's match it and also see whether there's any network traffic from it. So that's um, what we can do is to match anything from, not from a data source, but from a previous variable that we have, or all the activities and get a Twitter um, uh, process and then try to see whether there's any narrow traffic. We get five distinct narrow traffic flows from it. So most of them connect to, this is uh, the one that we are inspecting the, the, the source. And most of them connecting to this one, the, actually this is the web proxy. So that means we do not get a real destination. Mm. If we want to get a real destination, we need to ask the other half of the proxy traffic from the um, from the, the, the web proxy. So what we can do is, um, so this time um, we ask um, web proxy, which is, which has, uh, which a curator is running there and get all the logs from there. We can ask the curator box, uh, which is the commercial SIM system. Um, and then we can ask all the narrow traffic from it that matches the criteria we give. What is the criteria? That is, that has the IP address of the source IP address, source port, and, and as well, Castro will derive a timestamp from our previous traffic so that actually it's a three tuple, the source IP, source port, and timestamp that will uniquely identify this traffic so that we get the second half of the traffic going out. We get a real destination IP address. So this one seems to be familiar. Okay, this is narrow storage uh, sensitive data here. We still don't know what are the other narrow traffic IP addresses. Hmm. We can do some of the uh, kind of uh, um, IP address enrichment. Yes, we can. We can apply the second analytics here to help us do that. That's the destination IP enrichment. So, um, and then we can display the, um, the information um, there. Basically, this is uh, analytics that run live in a Docker container to reach out to these services to get uh, uh, domain name and corporation back. So that we see that um, not only this internal sending one, it's also, also reach out to some of the external Twitter IP and Cloudflare. This looks like a data concentration. Are we sure? So we can get some other help from the um, 
one of the uh, data extraction model that I built um, within the last couple of weeks that um, digest the normal traffic from star X about so which server usually split which type of traffic to which IP addresses and try to decide whether this is something um, suspicious uh, look like an exfiltration or not. This is the third um, analytics we can run. So as you see, I pipe the second analytics on top of the first one so that we can show the IP address with what we get from the first analytics and what we get from the second analytics. As it shows here, um, this is a highly likely a data exfiltration to this IP address given the model that um, um, built through the last couple of weeks. And okay, then that, that's pretty good that uh, we have a very easy hunt, get some of the very useful information, but one question we still do not understand where the, the, the attacker is coming from. Okay, so we know that this is exploits and can we get that incoming traffic from this exploit, uh, exploited uh, kind of uh, um, process. We can find network traffic um, created by this um, process. We found zero network traffic. Okay, that is because this one is actually the, the forked process and actually the Node.js main process handles in our traffic. What we can do is um, we can find, try to find the, the, um, the parent process of this one and then to find our traffic from there so that um, we can try to find and display our traffic from the parent process of this expired one. Okay, we get that. This is a destination IP, which is our current investigating um, server. And this is the source. Oh, it's coming from internal um, insider threads here. One of the employees laptop. Fortunately, we have Sys Sysmon running there so that we can ask the server for more details about what happened within the, the uh, not server, the laptop. So this is the narrow traffic that views from the, uh, the server side, but we can also have the same narrow traffic but viewed from the Windows laptop side so that we can do um, what we did similarly for the curator that we try to match narrow traffic from um, a Windows laptop one for one um, and then um, we match it from their uh, uh, destination uh, IP address and source port, as well as the timestamp that will be automatically derived. So we get the same narrow traffic, but this time we get that from the Windows laptop. So let's see which process gets that. Um, created DNT display um, P uh, R name command line. Okay, let's get some of the basic idea what happens. Ah, there is a PowerShell um, script waxing availability of JPEG that, that causes this traffic and, and uh, penetrate into the server. So, what's really um, is uh, a parent process. Um, let's see. And the parent process of the PowerShell is a email client. Okay, um, that looks like this is something um, um, like uh, spam, um, and uh, the the user just uh, um, created by. Sorry, that's here. I, I try to match um, the the child process of the PowerShell to see what else the attacker did. Okay, a lot of pins, and uh, then um, open a JPEG. Okay, that's expected. So that basically, currently we have a, a, a good idea what happens um, for the attack. So let's write a summary and about the attack. And um, the source of the attack happens when um, there was a phishing email going into the email client that was clicked by the employee on this machine. And uh, the PowerShell script 
um, penetrates into another server, vulnerable server, and then has the CNC established and exfiltrated data out through Twitter. That's all about the attack. That's good. Thank you for watching. Um, this is the entire hunt.